A good example of that by way of starter, 1 Kings chapter 17. Glory to God. 1 Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17, uh, that would take us a long read, but then, uh, let's do First Kings chapter 18 verse 41 first, then I'll take you to First Kings 17. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 41. And Elijah said unto Hab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Elijah said unto Hab, Get up and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. This is Elijah announcing the change of season to the king. The king at that time is Hab. Hallelujah. How did I know that Elijah was announcing a change of season? Well, 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1 lets us know that. Hallelujah. And Elijah the Tishbite was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Hahab, the same man, as the Lord God of Israel leave it before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. So Elijah had said to the king previously that I swear you will not see a drop of water from heaven. Do you get that now? Verse 2 of that first king says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hands. And turn thee his word. Okay, we'll get into that much later. So Elijah I told this king, from now forward, there will be no rain. And then a time came, he went back to the same king and said, O king, move now. And in fact, go with excitement because there is a sound of abundance of rain. Now somebody that probably is, you know, maybe aquaculture and fisheries management, maybe somebody studies environmental, you know, management, all right? And person is a meteorologist, it's like, for you to hear a sound, it's already looking cloudy, all right? First Kings 18, verse 41. Elijah said unto Ahab, get you up, heat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain, verse 42. So he had went up to heat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. I'm sure you know that Carmel is a mount, a mountain. Look at what he did next. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. What is that? What sign is that? He put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. He went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. So when Elijah announced, there was nothing that looked like it was about to rain. Are you following? When Elijah announced there was nothing around. So that means the infrastructure with which Elijah announced this change of season was not a natural or sensual faculty. Glory to Jesus. Was not a natural or sensual faculty. Glory to Jesus. And that's why discerning seasons um, is fundamentally an activity that is powered by the Spirit of God. 
Amen. It's an activity that is powered by the Spirit of God that is inside of us. Or said differently, it's an activity that is uh, sometimes both a combination of the natural and the supernatural. In the natural sense of it, you can look at that as soul searching. Sometimes by way of soul searching, which we can sometimes permit to be described as meditation. Amen. Are we together? Which we can sometimes describe as meditation, contemplation. All right? Contemplation. Pondering. All right? You can get into the revelation of some things that God himself is up to and is putting in your mind. Hallelujah. But on a much deeper and specific level, that's when we talk about this discerning of seasons as prophetic alignment. Amen. So in that sense, we're not doing soul searching only. Amen. This is like standing on the edge of eternity. And now you are taking a gaze, you are taking a peep into the very mind of God. And this, this is the simple disparity. <laughs> this is the simple disparity. The difference. Every believer...
there is perception. Hallelujah. Then there is interpretation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are we together? In discerning things, there is perception, and then there is interpretation. Hallelujah. Now, perception is always, always, always accurate because it is God supplied. Are we together? Amen. Perception is always, you see, we did not, I don't want to call it nonsense, but it's nonsense that you are doing there. You are making me spend more time than necessary. Glory to Jesus. You are making me spend more time than necessary. Are we together? Perception is always accurate. Because it is God that supplies it. I want to show you that. Verse 11. Such a what, or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Are you following now? Did signify. When the Holy Ghost is supplying, that's a sign. When the Holy Ghost is prompting, when he's creating a nudge, a witness, like the inward witness we talked about earlier, that is one of the things he supplies. So I can pick a witness in my spirit. I can sense. I can perceive. That's the Holy Ghost. My interpretation eh, is based on my accuracy. It's based on my skill sets. Hallelujah. Are you following? Amen and amen. What did I say about discerning things again? There is perception. There is interpretation. That I can perceive does not mean I have developed skill set in interpretation. That's what I'm trying to buttress. Amen. And that's why my word compliance, how accurate my doctrine has become, becomes a filter that either helps my interpretation or causes bias there. Hallelujah. Are we together? So in discerning, there will be what? Perception, and then there will be what? Interpretation. This is why, oh, just generically speaking, many people have misinterpreted the leadings of the spirits. Are you getting the point? You've heard stuff like, oh, I had a dream, and then what's the dream? God gave me the name of the ministry, and trust me, I'm not against that outrightly God gave me the name hmm. he gave you the name okay let's hear the name now when you told us the name now, that's how the thing sounded like something that Elijah started you see that now you perceived you picked we have not learned interpretation amen people have hmm. I sense a call. Mm, you sense. That's beautiful. But did you interpret? I feel like God is asking me, like I saw going viral on, on Instagram sometimes, maybe last week or two weeks ago. The pastor was saying that, you know, there's a lady like that that just said, God told her not to go to church. God told you not to go to church. That's fine. 
lock yourself up for 60 days. Okay? Now you've locked yourself up for 60 days. When anybody comes to knock and want to see you, don't listen. Don't listen. Halfway through that process, you said that voice came again and said, now, face Lagos Ibadro Expressway and be speaking in tongues. You see that that's how madness begins. No, I'm not talking about madness. I'm talking about people that they will have to pack and chain them. That's how it starts. Do you see that now? Okay, so in your mind, because of all those cutting off now, what are you doing? That's how to press. You know, that's how to press. Are you seeing that now? So, for example, people say, God asked me to leave where everything is convenient. And then he asked me to go into the remote of the Missouri. Ah! So that's where my season is now. Okay. Oh, say me, I'm John the Baptist. Really? I will teach you discerning your unique assignment. Why are you John? Are you getting the point? I sense. Nice. Sense all you want. But what is the interpretation? So I'm picking. Okay, what are you picking? Glory to God. So, without flogging that for too long, we have established that the prophetic is very essential to recognizing and apprehending the seasons of life that we're in as a people. Glory to God. And the prophetic, as we have discussed, is the ability to discern or recognize events, patterns, or cycles. Glory to God. So, we're going to use our spirits to be able to decipher what events we're going to use our spirit to decipher what patterns we're going to use our spirit to decipher what cycles now let me quickly mention something before i move on you know just like that hallelujah you have to understand that there is a reason why we have the scriptures just follow me very closely when the lord wants to bring a thing into your life and he would use symbolism, signs, all right? Those methodology to bear witness with your spirit. What the Holy Ghost on your inside will do is bear witness with that sign and an already established sign in scripture. So when you are going to receive something that does not particularly have maybe a scripture verse, there must be a pattern for it in scripture. Are you getting the point now? There will be an established pattern in scripture that you will know that, oh, this is how this pattern is. Ah, oh, now, I am Paul. And I need an Ananias that must come and lay hands on me for me to receive my sight. Do you get the point now? There are those patterns. There are those patterns whereby, you know, People were praying for Peter and then as they were praying, making prayer ceaselessly for Peter. Why? Because Herod had just killed James. Are you following? And then for some reason, maybe it's a point where your spirit is speaking something and then you're like, Rika Baba, Rika Baba, Rika Baba, Rika Baba, Baba. Nothing. The word of God is certainly in it. Hmm. Unless you are in that rica, bah, bah, rica, bah, bah, bah. your spirit will be picking that. See, if you don't make prayer available, the same way they ended James, that's the same way they will end Peter. Do you understand? You will see those patterns in scripture. Hallelujah. Are we together? For instance, the book of Acts is a very fantastic book. All right, but you surprise you to realize that the church you saw in Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, in fact, down to chapter 10, is a church of babes. 
Are you following? It's a church of babes. So that tells you something. Every church, all right, every household will grow in stages. Are you following what I'm talking about? Every church will grow in stages. So there will be a phase whereby, you know, this is infancy. After a while, you will see adolescence. After a while, what will you see next? A full grown house. Hallelujah. That's how you see it. You see it graduating in stages, in steps. Hallelujah. Most of those churches that were being planted in hearts, they were the ones that were now later written to, in which one of them, Paul now said, uh, I commend to you a paphras, one of you, that's Colossians, who is laboring ceaselessly. Ah, now they are growing. One among them is now taking responsibility over the others. Hallelujah. So that means even in the collective house, we can discern hmm, where is this church now? Are you following? Where is this work now? As a business, you can discern where is this business now? Am I right for five million? Am I right for 10 million naira? Am I right for a million dollars? So now you begin to use that to decide and determine the things that will characterize the face of your life. I get what I'm saying. Meaning that there will be things that are possible, but not all things are obtainable. Because your season is different. Come on, are you with me? So there will be things that are possible. But because you have been able to judge and decipher and discern your season, you know that, uh uh-uh, no. It's possible. But then, it's not what's obtainable. I guess what I'm saying. So if man can discern, oh, for me, this face, I'm supposed to deepen my roots. Just like a church. When a church is in its infancy, what you need is not the most fanciful things. Deep on your roots. Take root downwards. Hallelujah. And there are some things that have been statistically in your first five years. Don't chase clouds. In a business, in a profession, don't chase clouds. What's your business? Deep on your roots. Dig your wells. Hallelujah. So I come to the ministry. Okay, now you are coming to the ministry. It's your first five years. You are chasing invitation up and down. Can I see you are not normal? You are talking to everybody about inviting you to come and speak. Over what? That you are not known. Are you following what I'm saying? A pastor, if you are starting a walk or you are put over a walk, sit there. Don't look for invitation. Don't go up and down. Are you following what I'm saying? Pastor Diola Phillips, I don't know what her portfolio Okay, she is the director of the International School of Ministry, Christ Embassy. She said in the first 20 years, I, I can't remember if it's up to 20 years, they never saw their pastor preach in any other church. Not that they don't come and invite him, or they invite him, he turns it down. Do you understand? He was able to discern. Paul says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. That's what I'm saying. Everything is possible. You can borrow money to fast track things, but are you ripe for that thing? I get what I'm talking about. You can borrow money to quickly, you know, pad everything and then make it look like, but are you ripe for that thing? That's why the advice business grows systematically. Grow systematically. You get the point? So, the, the, the ability to build things that will be long term and grow progressively is actually sitting on the ability of the man that's controlling things for decent seasons. 
which means if you are in nurturing stage, all right, don't be doing what is for expansion stage. That is nurture, nurture it. I guess what I'm saying. Can I tell you something? I feel zero remorse. Zero. That I don't get invitations. In fact, I'm happy. No. Much more than happy. You get the point? Much. Okay, question. What are you looking for? Your pulpit that you have to preach twice a week, have you preached it off? <laughs> okay, no problem. Don't worry. I will be selected in what I say. Don't worry. Since I see that you are not ready. Do you understand? I, I see how people are unnecessarily bothered about what is inconsequential. Things that have no bearing with their season. I get to the point. You are in 200 level. You already put out that nobody is asking you out. I will slap you. I will slap you. You know those slaps that parents used to slap that your head will hit the wall. So that your brain can reset. Okay, they should ask you out in 200 level for what purpose? So I can be confused and distracted. <laughs> I guess what I'm talking about. So, let me just put it like this. The fact that people are unable to discern season creates unnecessary apprehension. Yeah. The, it creates unnecessary apprehension. And do you know what? Just like the scriptures we read about in First Peter about the prophet, if only you can search, God will tell you. I get to the point. If only you can search, God will tell you. I say, what's going on here is not a problem. It's a season thing. I guess what I'm talking about. If one can ask, God will reveal. Hallelujah. Just imagine that Paul, maybe much earlier in his life, he had, you know, tried, you know, done his boy and then done all of those kind of things and then they just they always they always hammering him and axing him down i guess in the point they did not became born again took up ministry and all of that and then for some reason he still kept experiencing the same thing i think that's already enough to let a man know that well maybe at this point i should ask So, because people cannot discern, it's discerning, discerning. Hallelujah. Let's move on and just go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes will help us put a couple of things together. Chapter 3. Hallelujah. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hallelujah. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under what? The heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal. If I ask you, what season are you in? Because everything has time. I'm not talking about everything has time as far. This time for you to wash your clothes. So Saturday is your lunch. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the calendar spectrum of God. Where are you? Can you pinpoint? And can you gallantly say that as far as God's calendar is concerned and it's, it's the spectrum of his plan, I'm right where he wants me to be. Whatever the experience is. A couple of years ago, a series of incidences, of course, unpalatable, unfolded, and then one thing led to another, to another, a couple of setbacks here and there. 
and then praying and praying and praying. Ah, oh, first, okay, I think it was 2022 that we announced the UK church. Uh, and I said, oh, it's time to go and start up the UK church, which rightfully so. Hmm, should I teach you some of these things? Okay. So, who gave the vision of UK church? Huh? But the same God that announced. Hmm? All right? Me, I know that about timing, uh, when it comes to timing, leave it. Leave it. I guess any point. I knew that there were certain signs that would have to be in place for that step to be embarked on. Are you following? There is time. There is fullness of time. So the plan was announced in time. But me, I knew. Fullness of time. Are you following what I'm talking about? You know what? There are certain signs like constellation that must line up. Then, bam. Aha. So I didn't see those signs. Or they were in process. Okay, no problem. So I knew that we stay here. Till those, one of those signs is groom men, train people. Dig the wells of leadership. 2022 down to you now, if you know how intensive we have been about leadership development and structuring, uh, you see it now. But when that was done and that, that whole thing was over, a couple of other things too. I'm like, God, what's this? And so praying, inquiry, all right? Praying, Lord, what is going on? I saw it. Not saw it like, hmm, I sleep. No, 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 no. I saw it. Discernment, ability to make sense of signs, patterns. Are you with me? And what I saw was in this period, you're a missionary. Hmm. Are you following? What I saw was in this period, you're a missionary. That is Moses. For the sake of the vision he has seen ahead, forsook the pleasures of Egypt, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to be called the daughter, the son of Pharaoh. Ah, okay. Pharaoh and his daughter would gladly receive Moses if he came back home. But for a greater cause, Moses declined. Oh, okay. So in this period, I am Moses. You have the option to go but you choose not to go because of something. Yeah. Are you following? Oh, so I, ah, in this case, I am Moses. Okay, no problem. That is to say, whether things are good or bad, does not even matter. In the first place, you are a missionary. In that case, you are a missionary. What is the meaning of missionary? As I was deciphering it then. The case was that missionaries have left their home and comfort in different parts of the world before. They went to Africa for the sake of the gospel. They were living in mud. They were living in earth. Are you living in mud? <laughs> no. <laughs> I said, no okay, sir. Continue. No problem. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Talking about, see, if you do have this ability, to, you will misconstrue what God is doing. God will say you are a missionary. You say, ah, this is, de this is demons. Demons. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. So, it is the discerning of seasons that is required to know what time and phase you are in your personal journey. Nobody can actually except the head of the spirit. Nobody can particularly give you the best advice. The best advice, quote and unquote, except by the head of the spirit. And that means sometimes the voices we listen to, we must check their source. What I mean check their source, the prophetic alignment of their soul. Because I can be talking to somebody and 
What the person is saying to me is far from the matter. Because man, I'm checking from a different source. And the person is telling me from a different source. And I can say, oh God, this thing is about season. Amen. So, Ecclesiastes says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up. Look at that. There is a time to break down. There is a time to build up. So that means sometimes, some ventures, you are putting in the best of the best of energy and ability. And for some reason, this thing is not just working. There's a time to break down. There's a time to break down. Ah, but I've been doing this thing for the past 15 years. You know, it's actually, I, I saw a video that just recently, this, this evening. It's a lot of sense to be able to decipher when the season of 18 has expired. The person said that you started out as a musician and that was what blew you. Does not mean you must continue as a musician. Yes, sir. That you started as an actor or actress and that blew you. Does not mean by force, by fire. So here you are now. The road is not working again and by force, by fire, you want to die in entertainment. What if God has moved on? So it's time to break down. I can assess a business. I can assess a venture. And for some reason, maybe as I check and I'm open to God to really move my soul, I can just realize that, you know what? And really, that must be our first posture when it comes to dealing with God and praying. Sometimes we have made up our mind about the, so, the end result we want from a thing. Then we take it to God. God, why is this relationship not working? Maybe God wants that relationship to end. Ah, but I love this person. But I value this person. Eh, eh. The Bible says that uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the de- desires of your heart. That word delight is not, you know, ah, oh, yo, me, oh, yo, me. Oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not delight yourself in the Lord. It says be malleable in God's hands. That's the meaning. Be malleable in God's hands. So you can't determine the business God will use to bring you financial fortune. You can't insist. You can't insist on where God will bless you. And sometimes that's where we are getting it wrong. We have made up our mind. And so we are now praying as if we are tackling maybe the place, maybe the environment, maybe relationship or the activity as the problem. Whereas, what God wants us to first of all do is, Lord, here I am empty handed. What exactly is it? What do I need to know? What do I need to hear? What do I need to reevaluate? Hallelujah. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Verse 5 A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. Look at something. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. Some of us, we are very social by design. We like to cleave, but the word of God says there's a time to cleave. There is a time to spread. There's a time to cleave. People have come to meet me. When their travel idea and, you know, inspiration was coming to their mind, I can swear on that God. Never for once did a bias come into my mind like, ah, ah, if this person goes down. No, 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 no. I have settled it in my mind. There's a time to cleave. There's a time to spread. So it was easy for me to inspire them and say, oh boy, fly. 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 So if you don't carry that your bag, I will flog you. Carry that bag, go. You will not do us any good in cleaving. And sometimes, 
this inability to discern when it is time to spread has caused many people many things. They've chosen to be sent. I've discussed with well meaning elders and wise men. And I've heard some of them say to me, that, Do you know the mistake I made? I chose to stay when I should have left. I chose to stay. Maybe they chose to stay at a business. Maybe they chose to stay at a company. Maybe they chose to stay at something longer than they should have stayed. Some of them have told me I should have gone to Lagos. Some of them have told me that I should have gone to Lagos. I should have left. I should have moved. Because like I said last week, the experience of a man's life by law has been tied to his environment. So some of us, maybe we've been praying. And that's beautiful. Ah, boy, it's time to do a soul search. Like I started off on. It's time to allow God to enter into some space. If you're like me, I'm afraid of new environment. Oh, yeah, because we are so sheer by design, right? But that should never get into the way when God is blowing his season and he's saying it's time to spread. Spread your wings. Expand. I get what I'm talking about. So there is a time to do what? To embrace. A time to bid farewell. Say, I love my mom. I don't want to marry. Then remain single. I love my dad. I don't know who will take care of him if I marry that boy. Remain single. Because you have not learned the wisdom of saying bye bye. You have not learned the wisdom. There's a time to cleave, and there's a time to depart. I'm telling you what is injuring some people from marriage men and women. So tied to the apron of their family. Say, so, ah, I can't leave my siblings. <laughs> they remain. I guess what I'm talking about. They remain. Say, so, me and my siblings, we share things together. Our money, we bring it together. We take care of ourselves. <laughs> no problem. Remain like that. Because you do read it in your Bible that for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to this wife and the two shall become one flesh. Somebody said marriage does not bring two, mar- two families together. It creates a third one. It creates a third one. Say, so, ah, I love my siblings. I can't leave them. I can't do one day without them. Be, beware of confessions you make. Beware. Ah, if my mommy died today, I will die tomorrow. Beware. Beware. Because that's how many incidences have happened in life and they look like surprise. They didn't know the confession the person was making before. They saw the father died yesterday. They saw him die the following week. Check the confession was always making. Say, my father died. The next month, I'm going. And they are stamping it. Because by the words of a man, shall he be justified? Say, if my father died, I must go. I can't live in this world without my father. And God honors that word. After one, one month, pay him. He called, he called to glory. Are you following what I'm talking about? So life is in what? Seasons. Amen. Are we together? So we must be able to discern the things that characterize the time and phase that we have in our personal journey. Hallelujah. Are we together? We must be able to discern time. We must be able to discern places. We must be able to discern people and relationships. He was able to discern nature of activities. Hallelujah. Let me show you one very good example to that effect. You know, I just begin to round up. First Kings chapter 17. Oh, glory to God. Somebody being blessed tonight. 
Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Zibara la matos, kiri basata kabaya. Zibara la matos, sakabaya. Lira baba. First Kings chapter 1, that's the part I said I was going to come back to earlier. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Kiri koshada baya. Liga bakada bashi gede gede gede. Sambara gada bakadiya. And Elijah the Tishba, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain this year, but according to my word. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord came to who Elijah saying, You know that word? Immediately a season started. The season of drought. Immediately that season started. Look at what God did next. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, What did he say? If we are discerning and careful enough, whenever a season is starting, God speaks. Whenever a season is shifting, if we are discerning enough, if our ears are attentive enough, attuned enough to the things that God is saying or that his heart is beating with, if we are attuned enough, ah, we will pick it. He said, what did, what, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that get the hands and turn the eastward and I thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. Season of drought was about to begin. God spoke to this guy where his prosperity is. Where his sustenance is. So that the season notwithstanding his experience will be unique. Look at that. That's why I said that our ability to discern season, first and foremost, and benefit from it, is at the mercy of our ability to hear God. Hear God. Hear God. What is God saying? So look at this guy. Get his and turn the his other night as somebody broke cherry that before Jordan. All right. What next? Verse 4. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Hallelujah. Went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook cherry that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Verse 7. And it came to pass after a while. That the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. So season was about to shift from adverse to more adverse. What happened again? Look at verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him again, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephah, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there, because I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. You can see that it would be foolishness to stay at Bucherit, because God said it in the beginning. It would be foolishness and counterproductive on this guy's part to remain at Brook Cherit because God once said so. You know, it was a possibility for God to make Brook Cherit to keep springing. But God said that's not what we will work with. Many times, it's still that flexibility that is problem with people. Being malleable in God's hands. God said what I want to do is I want to let the widow feed you. Don't say God, let the water here spring. Don't say God, no. You are the Almighty, the great I am. There's nothing possible. Be malleable. The Bible said the wisdom from heaven is first of all peaceable. That's the character of the wisdom from heaven. Easy to be entreated. The meaning of easy to be entreated is malleable. James 3 14. If it was the wisdom from heaven, it is diabolical, devilish. So this kind of wisdom is not from heaven. Say for the wisdom from heaven is first of all peaceable, easy to be entreated, that is malleable. So when you find one that truly has the characteristics of wisdom from heaven, that wisdom is malleable. Be flexible in God's hands. Are you following now? Be malleable. 
And that's what we saw Elijah demonstrate there. God said, move from Brook Cherith. Go now to where? To Zarephath. He left. You know that what? Elijah was able to discern that it's time for me to live here. This place served me, but during its time. So thank you. He served me when it was his time. But now, he's got to move on. That's the way your life is and God has designed some things in your life. There are places you must say bye-bye to. There are people you must say bye-bye to. You were childhood friends. Things were going so good when all of you were starting out together. But by reason of the season and the purpose that is now attached to your life, they must do some things bye-bye. Because five minutes with them, the conversation drags you backward. How relevant will that now be to the present thing God is doing? So he said, but is that not pampasness? Kai, you must understand that God protects greatness with jealousy. Yes. I need to say that again. God protects greatness with jealousy. Did you read it in your Bible? Cast no pearls before swine. Did you read that? God himself will not throw precious jewel before people that will not cherish it. That's the meaning. So you are more wise than God, Abi. He said, no, me, I'm, I'm, I'm humble. I'm humble. I want to be relatable. No problem. Hallelujah. So Elijah was able to discern his season. Let's look at Jesus and then that would just be all. Is somebody being blessed tonight? Hallelujah. John chapter 7 from verse 1. John chapter 7 from verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, his brethren, that's his family, his brothers. Depart and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the work that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. If you notice, Jesus never contested the logic in what they said. Let's read on. For neither did his brethren believe in him. The people giving that advice, they do not even believe. Look at verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. He never faulted that advice. He just pinned it to timing. He never faulted the advice of taking a gifting to the house top. Because when a gifting is a gifting indeed, no man lights a light and puts it under a bushel. So Jesus did not contest that. The only thing he pinned it to was timing. The only thing he pinned that conversation on Timing. Are you following? Timing. What did Jesus say? Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. That's a man that could discern his time. He knows that every offer is not his offer. Every offer is not his offer. My time is not yet come. Then look at what he said to them. But your own time is always ready. Any time is your time. You don't work with Kairos. Everything is Kronos for you. You don't work with Kairos. Everything for you is Kronos. You know that what? If I don't sense appointed time for a thing, we don't do it. 
Now I have the money now. Let me build God a tabernacle. Ah, Kairos, 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 Kairos. I have the money now. Let me just marry and say to that. Ah, Kairos, 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 Kairos. Are you following? I had the money then I could build the most gigantic structure I can think of. Ah, but every time is not our time. Every time is not our time. So his disciples, I mean his brethren were saying, go, go, go now. Show yourself to the world. Show yourself to the world. Let people know you have a right. He said, no. Every time is not my time. Hallelujah. Look at another text. John 17. 1 to 2. Hallelujah. John 17, 1 to 2. Then this word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, what did Jesus say? The hour. Notice that they've not sent police and all of them, DSS, to come and carry him here. Before they came, he knew that the hour has come. The hour of my passion has come. The hour of darkness is come. He knew. He knew. He said, now the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. What did he now begin to do? He now began to pray for his disciples. He began to talk like a man that is indeed about to go. Are you following? He began to pray prayers that... Uh, you want uh, what's going on? We started this thing together. Don't worry. We, you must have been looking at them like you don't understand. Hallelujah. This must have been the content of the prayer I prayed in that Gethsemane. Are you getting the point now? So he began to pray, knowing that the hour has come. I Meaning he knew the time. You get the point? That I would step into the final phase of that thing that he has come to do. So he could discern his assignment and the time of his consummation. Before stepping out in ministry too, he knew when it was time. He knew. How did we know that he knew there was a time when he first appeared at John's meeting? The baptism meetings. That was the first time. And that first time he came, because if he had been coming, John would have recognized. So the first day he showed up, ah, John saw him. Okay. That's in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 3, 13, that's where the whole baptism thing happened. Are you following? Notice something about Jesus. He didn't start till he heard the voice from heaven. The witness. So the Bible said that as he was being baptized and he was being brought out of the water, the heavens opened and there came a loud voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The sign came out. Are you following? The sign. So that not just him alone, everybody heard it. The confirmation he came. Everybody heard it. Are you following? To now prove that he indeed he knew from that point forward. Eh? He now went into the wilderness for 40 days. You get the point? For 40 days to fast and pray. Then he came out. The Bible said he returned in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So you see that in Jesus. You see that in Elijah. We see that in a lot of the apostles. Hallelujah. That we're able to discern the times. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Hallelujah. So I fought a good fight. Look at that. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Look at that. 
So a man like Paul can know the season he is in and now I'm in my legacy phase. From this phase forward, I should groom young men who will step in. You see that now? He said, as far as me, I'm, I have finished my own. So what he's doing in that last phase and days of his life, he's helping young men. So he has entered, we call it legacy phase. We are helping the next generation. We are leaving something for the next generation. Hallelujah. And that's, that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be able to discern and decipher the faces and seasons of our life up until the point where we will know that we are finished what God has indeed marked out for us. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands wherever you are tonight and then just bless the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Sinti ke ababaya. Ni baraka sotundu lo bragadili kasati ke tabahai. Bron kusha parakata ni bahai. Ke rabababaya. Le raka shadaba kato iladaba. Le raba shakete brogodono mongo shakata bradigidi. Thank you, Lord. Brako shakata la brogodono mondi. Oh, rikitesh. Peleptoskato de brada babaya. Riga baba baba bashoko to brede leke sum to kaprada baba. Oh, raka sote raka te leke de bo shaka baba. Le raka sonda baba baba baya. Rege de bo shaka tala brada gada baya. Liga raba baba bake de bo shada baya. We are able to discern the times of our life, the faces and seasons of our life. By your spirit in all scale, and we walk circumspectly. We walk circumspectly. We walk circumspectly. She get to, and we maximize every face, every time, every season of our life. Baso toto kora babali ne mundos zela keto ra bababaya zela katele makasomba la babaya. For those in preparatory stage, we maximize that face in the name of Jesus. For those in manifestation face, we manifest and we glorify your name. Zele geto 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 bakata bakata kata zikete kata bakata kata bakata zika kata bakata balaka to bahaya. We receive and maximize all that you have in us and for us per season, per moment, per time. We apply ourselves to the wisdom and every season demands. Come on, pray, 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 pray like Costa. Machine le 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 Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Oh, Father, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you because our minds are unveiled by your spirit. Our minds are unveiled. We have learned that our mind is part of the faculties with which we interact with whatever you supply. And so our minds are unveiled in the name of Jesus. Our minds are unveiled in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you for breathing your life into our soul, into our consciousness. So that we're able to apprehend whatsoever you are saying and declaring per time and per season. In the name of Jesus. We apply ourselves to the wisdom that every season requires. In the name of Jesus, when it is time to cleave, we cleave. When it is time to desist from cleaving, we separate. 
in the name of Jesus. When it is time to plant, we plant. When it is time to harvest that which is planted, we don't take back, we don't hold back in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. And thank you for wisdom that you are pouring out upon your people. Because that's what you are doing to us. You are preparing us by your word so that we can apply ourselves to wisdom. So Lord, I pray over your people wisdom to maximize seasons and the advantages in times and seasons. Lord, I thank you for releasing over each and every one of your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for wisdom being released over your people. The wisdom to take advantage of seasons, to maximize periods. The Bible said, let us walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, and redeeming the time because the days are evil. Thank you because the wisdom to walk circumspect is upon us, your people, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because the wisdom to apprehend and make the most of time is upon us, your people, in the name of Jesus. No one falls short of this in the name of Jesus. No one misses these periods that you have ushered us into in the name of Jesus. We release your spirit. We release your angels that make for wisdom to be able to discern times in the name of Jesus. We receive the wisdom, the quickening to recognize Recognize our periods, our moments in the name of Jesus. Let there be signs and witnesses and right discernment of those times and those witnesses in the name of Jesus. Thank you for furnishing the environment with signs in this period, in this season. Thank you for it is so loud, no one can miss it. Thank you because it is so tangible, no one can miss it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. We bless your name tonight, our Father. We honor your name. We glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. What an awesome time we tonight. What a great experience, you know, God has given us and caused us to have. Hallelujah. Um, this is indeed something that God really wants us to focus and pay attention to so that we can maximize it for our benefit. And I'm trusting that, like was said at the beginning, we'll not just hear this, but we're going to maximize it. Amen and amen. We're going to give our offerings uh, just before close the service, hallelujah, and you know for certainty that in this period, in this season, our seeds, our offerings, our givings, uh, while it is our heart of honor to the Lord, you know, how we praise the Lord for what he has done for us, I want you to know that beyond that, in this specific season that we are in, it's our own way of tapping into the resources of heaven for wisdom to be able to make the most of what God is doing and saying to us in this season. Hallelujah. So I, I want you to see that you're giving, not just today, every other time in this window, this period that you know God has just opened for us, all right, this time of times. Glory to God. I want you to know that those seeds, they are your personal um, angels as it were they are servants all right that you are deploying into the realm of the spirit to be able to appropriate god's wisdom so i need you to be intentional whether or not what you are giving to god is much or little the heart and the seriousness with which you do it is very key hallelujah the consciousness with which you back this action up is very key Hallelujah. So I wanted to, to, to key into that in this night service. And then, of course, every other service, we are tapping into the wisdom of God to be able to maximize seasons. Amen and amen. So wherever you are right now, as we give, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Father, we thank you for giving us seed to sow, but to glorify your name. 
not able to provoke things in the realm of the spirit. And so as we give tonight, Lord, we thank you because this seed brings about bumper harvest of fruitful seasons in the name of Jesus. It brings about bumper harvest of maximized times and moments in the name of Jesus. Every kairos along our path, along our way, as we give tonight, our eyes are open to see them in the name of Jesus. Opportunities that you have watered and laid across our path, we begin to recognize, we begin to see them in the name of Jesus. And thank you for testimonies to these effects. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you as you give your offering. The account number is displayed both on the screen here yeah, and then on your screen for those watching at home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I believe strongly that God you know, is doing something, something very remarkable. Something really, really remarkable. Amen and amen. And we're going to maximize it. We're going to milk this period to its, to its fullness. Hallelujah. Let me say this very uh, shortly, just before we close the service. I want you to take seriously whatever God tells you during this period, be it in church or in your heart, as you're meditating on his word, going over some of the things you have read um, or listened to in church. I want you to take note of them because in seasons, instructions come. In seasons, instructions for that season come. And that's how we navigate in that period. That's how we maximize the fullness of what God is saying in that period. And so it's very important to take heed. And of course, generic instructions too, they are there. All right? Generic instructions that God is given to us as a church, they are there. The ones that we hear Sunday in, Sunday out, be a part of whatever God is doing. You know, they are part of the instructions. The the projects and things that are being talked about, they are part of the instructions in this season. They are not disconnected. They are very much a part of it. All right? Pay attention. If you pay attention, your own specific instruction, whether from the general one that we're all working with or in specifics, if you pay attention, you will hear specifically what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray very much that the Lord will cause us, everyone, to have fruits abounding to this effect in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we're grateful for such an awesome time tonight. Thank you for lifting burdens. Thank you for answering questions. Thank you for meeting needs, even in ways than what we can imagine. We thank you because testimonies are going to abound to this effect in our lives, not just those that are locally here, and even our our brethren in diaspora in different parts and nations of the world they're going to have fruits and testimonies to this effect in the name of Jesus. Thank you our Father. We give you praise in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. So thank you. God bless you. I'm sure we've had a great time in church today. We'll see you again on Sunday. Have a lovely night.